In this video, we're going to show you how to use the differential form of Ampere's law to solve for a problem where the current density is within a certain region and you want to find the B field outside that region. And so let me explain what really happens to the strength of the B field, the strength of the magnetic field, which of course is circular, goes around the current. When you're inside the region where the current is flowing, then the relationship between the B field uh, and the position away from the center, so notice that there is the center, so you go from the center out to the edge of that region where the current is flowing, then the relationship between the B field and the radius is a linear relationship. And you can see here that uh, it's mu sub naught i divided by 2 pi a sub naught squared. I don't know if you can see that with my head in the way, but here again. So mu sub naught i divided by 2 pi a sub naught squared times r. r being the only variable, the r as you go further out. And of course, a sub naught is the distance from the center to where the current stops flowing. Um, so then you see this is linear. And then in, you go past that, then it becomes as 1 over r. It becomes like the inverse of uh, the relationship to the inverse of the radius. And then the equation starts looking like this, where it's mu sub naught i divided by 2 pi times 1 over r. And that's where you have the 1 over r relationship right here. So this equation right here works fine for the region in here, but doesn't work fine for the region out here. If you try to do it for a, a position uh, away from where the current is flowing in this region, then you get the wrong answer. You actually get zero when you take the curl of the B field. And you go, why is that? Well, what you can do instead, you can imagine that all the current that flows to this region right here, or in other words, to this region right here, if you take the same amount of current and spread it out evenly over a greater, uh, like a cylinder region like this, and of course, so you take the current over here and you spread it out over there. So the amount of current is exactly the same, but now you make the current density smaller. So you spread out whatever current you have over this area right here into an area that's now four times as big, twice the radius or four times as big. With, with other words, the current density is now one quarter as much. Well, that's just an imaginary thing, right? It's not really that way. This is the real situation. You're going to just assume that here you have the current spread over a larger region, and now you're going to find the B field inside this region. So what happens then is, then the linear relationship between the B field strength and the radius now is still linear all the way out to two times the radius, and it will look something like this before it starts sloping down. So that allows you then to use the differential form of the Ampere's law within a region of twice the original radius, all the way out to A1, which is twice A sub zero. That's what I'm trying to show you here. A1 is twice A sub zero. So therefore, you now can find the B field anywhere in this region. Well, what that allows you to do then is find the B field out at this particular point. Now, of course, this will not equate the B field anywhere else because you can see the B field is actually like this and not down here. But at this point, the two, the two curves intersect right here. And you can say that the B field that you would have gotten from using the integral form of Gauss's of uh, Ampere's law, which is this curve right here, will equal the, the B field that you obtain through using the differential form of Ampere's law, because at that point they are equal to each other. Is that necessary? Well, not really. There's no real advantage in doing that. I just want to show you that if you try to use it out here without ignoring the fact that there's no current flowing in here, and of course, Ampere's law works off the current density throughout that entire region, you're going to get the wrong answer unless you assume something like this. So for example, if you want to find the uh, B field strength at a distance three times the radius, so way out here, then what you can do is just spread out your, re your region, take the same amount of current, call the current density now one ninth of its original density, and then bring the curve off way out here, and then you say, okay, then I can find out what the B field strength is right here at a distance of A2, which is now three times the original radius. And at this point, the, the uh, Ampere's law in integral form will equal Ampere's law in differential form right there at that point again. And you can use this equation, you can use a curl. The difference then is when you use a curl, instead of having a one over R relationship, you'll end up with an R relationship like this, and that you can take the curl off. So if you want to use a differential form in a situation like that, just imagine that the current is evenly distributed over the entire region out to the point where you want to find the B field. Otherwise, use the old form, use the integral form that says 
the line integral of the B field times dL is equal to mu sub naught times I enclosed. And so notice the big difference here. When you use integral form, you only need I enclosed, just like with Gauss's law. So you only care about how much current is within the region you're bounding like this with a curl. If you take the, the curl of the B field, then you set it equal to the current density. So there you want to find the density over the entire region. So you can't use this density right here. You have to spread out over the entire region that you're assuming where you want to find the B field. So you're going to take this current density and spread over here or spread over a bigger region depending upon where you want to find the B field. Hopefully that made it clear. So in this case, again, be careful how you use the differential form. Make sure you then assume the evenly distribu distribution of the current through the entire region you're considering and then find the B field at the edge of that region using this form of the equation and not using this form of the equation. Okay, I hope that helps.